Okay, hello everyone. Uh, I guess it's uh, time to start, so I won't take much of the time. You can hear me well there, right? Now? Sounds better now? No? Oh. Yeah, we're gonna check if we can do something related to. Have you ever seen anyone use the microphone in another session? Yeah, does anyone recall seeing a microphone used in another session? Yeah? Okay. Hello? Hello? Stuff now that they just kind of hit the switch and it went on. Yeah, I have it. I'm going to here. Oh, okay. No, that's just good. You mean down the road? Oh, okay. Okay, how about now? Yes. Oh, thank you so much. I'm still in. Good that's good. Job, Thanks a lot. See if I can find somebody. Um, would you mind? Yes. Would you mind turning off the mic for now? I'm going to see if I can find the person who resolved it this okay. this morning. Okay, okay. Apologies, folks. Okay. Yeah. So I'll try to scream a little bit to see if it works. They said that the microphone might actually go into the next room. So yeah. That's why I don't think they're using it. Yeah, thanks. So does the next room have our mic? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Are we moving? Move forward? Yeah. Oh, no. Yeah, I'll try. I'll try. I'll try. Yeah, sorry for that, but thank you for moving on. I appreciate it. Okay, so I'll get started because we we need to do the very best use possible time. So, uh, yeah, any content site can be integrated to Drupal. Uh, I'll show you how today. So basically, I'll be talking about this agenda. I'm going to go to a small introduction first. Then I'm going to talk about regarding migrations, and then I'm going to use a few uh, real life examples. So my name is Jorge Diaz. I'm a Drupal developer, or I've been a Drupal developer for the last uh, uh, 13 years. Uh, I work at a company uh, named Evolving Web. We're based in Montreal, and we love doing Drupal for a long time. Uh, basically, we help organizations to switch over into their digital experiences and improve the way they make a big change in the world. So we've worked with many universities. We work also with many uh, health institutions, and we have customers in a wide base of places and industries across the, the world, but mainly in North America. So uh, yeah, we also do a lot of training. By the way, most of these uh, companies, we help them training their developers to become 
the better group of the vocals. So basically, uh, I'll be talking about uh, triple migration today. But I won't go too technical. The idea is to give you like a pretty uh, wide uh, overview of how does it work and how we've done it in the past. So basically, if you were to ask yourself, what is tuple? OK, tuple is just, uh, for me, it's a folder full of files. <laughs> That's it. If I were to copy it in this uh, on a pen drive and were to give it to you, I don't have tuple anymore. Now you have it. That's basically it. It's code. Um, but there's something else I want to mention today. There's a function called clock that stands for count lines of code. So basically, if I go into a terminal and then I go inside of a Drupal folder and I do clock, this is what I'm going to get. So it's a breakdown of everything related to what's inside that specific folder. Now, see that there's a specific column for blank spaces, comments, and what's code itself. So now we're getting a little bit more into the meat. So Drupal, it's about 1.2 million of lines of functional code. It could be functional, it could be static, like CSS, or it could be descriptive code, like the YAML files, that basically we use for many things. So if you were to see this on a Pi, we can now say the Drupal, it's about uh, 3 quarters, 75% PHP code, and the rest is broken down uh, that way. But this is not the point I'm heading to. This is the main point I'm heading to. So Drupal, right as you do load it from Drupal.org, it's a big source of code that's entirely maintained by a community. So you don't need to take care of it. The entire community is going to take care of it. And obviously, this is one of the main reasons Drupal has grown so far. And the main mantra of the community is come for the software and stay for the community. Now, going back to the folder, this was basically an example, but I want to go to a more uh, real life scenario. This is a customer's bus. This is a website uh, they built for their uh, bridge project. So basically, uh, they're building a bridge, a huge bridge that's connecting Detroit and Windsor, and they're calling it Windsor Detroit uh, Authority uh, Bridge. Basically, uh, it's a project that started in 2015, and they start marketing it somehow with a small website they made, which is this one over here, but that's not what they're good at. They're good at building bridges, not building websites. So they came to us for help, and we helped them discreetly build a website entirely built on top of Drupal that for them, it's pretty easy to manage. They don't need to take care of anything. Uh, it's mobile. It's all that you might expect to have on a website uh, in 2022, uh, but it's not that code base anymore. Obviously, we're talking now about a bigger website that took more stuff to do. It's not something you just don't load and that's it. It took a lot of setup. So if we run clock again in this website, we're going to get a different kind of information. So first, now I'm breaking it down by sections. If you look at a Drupal course section, we're talking about almost a million lines of code. And uh, I intentionally background green over here, uh, the sections that are maintained by the community, and then in gray in the sections that are uh, developed by our agency. So you can see there's the Drupal core, there's also the vendor folder that comes inside of Drupal, which is also maintained by all the communities. Then there's the contrib module uh, folder that it's modules maintained by the Drupal community, but different subsections inside of the community. Then we have the theme libraries where we have a lot of CSS, JavaScript, uh, you can see by the volume files uh, that are mainly focused on uh, taking care of the front end side of Drupal. Uh, sorry, not Drupal, but those tools that are also integrated inside of Drupal. And then we have our custom modules that have some PHP, and then we have a custom team that has more front end uh, work. But the point I'm getting to, it's even if we can break it down this way, and we can say that the Drupal core, it's maintained by the Drupal community, the vendor library is maintained by the Symfony community and many other communities, and so on, I can go all the way around it, about 99.55% of the website, it's still not maintained, neither by us, and neither by the Windsor uh, Bridge Authority. It's entirely maintained by a community. So basically, you're benefiting yourself by a lot by not leveraging your resources into 
uh, some developers might make a mistake and you are completely leveraging your needs into a huge community which is uh, maintained or built by thousands of people all across the globe and can help you just focus on building the bridge. That's it. So going back to it, you said, uh, this is what they're uh, right now. So they went from having a website uh, entirely by, by their own, obviously, they use some libraries, they use some stuff, but now this is uh, maintained by someone who so is not neither us and neither them. Uh, plus, there's a big fact here uh, Drupal, uh, by the latest report from uh, W3Tax, this is a report they do every day scanning uh, a lot of websites on the internet. Uh, this is the last from today. Uh, Drupal, which I'm not comparing, which is bad or worse. Uh, whatever compared to WordPress and many other similar systems, Drupal still stands as to be uh, maybe not the most used, but the one used uh, by websites that receive the most traffic uh, from the internet. So going back to it, what we did, it's we basically grab an old website, we create a connection in the middle, and we create a new one. So this is what it's actually a migration. Uh, in, a Drupal migration, sorry. Yeah, and if we see from the other perspective, we took them from a, I won't say a risky scenario, but looking forward, it's an unsustainable somewhat scenario because you're gonna have to spend more and more resources trying to maintain it, customizing it, adding new features. Now they're entirely on top of a few, uh, a much better solution for, for the needs. So that's what we did, we did immigration. Now, what does it actually mean means to uh, migrate? There are different ways of seeing it. And I'm gonna use the example of the tesla.com website. So if you go right now to tesla.com and inspect their HTML code, you're gonna find uh, the meta tag that said that it's been, uh, that this HTML is being rendered by a Drupal engine behind it. In this case, they're using uh, Drupal 9. Now, it wasn't always like that. Uh, if you go back, in the Wayback Machine, you can find that on November 16, 2021, they started using Drupal 9. The day before, they were still using the production version on their website using Drupal 8. Uh, it was not a coincidence, I'll talk about later why this happened at that specific moment. But if we go further in time, we can see that on July 2018, they were using Drupal 7. So they've been gradually jumping from one version to another over the past few years. And you may say, okay, Tesla is an organization that has a lot of resources, they can have a lot of in-house developers to take care of that, but it's not, that's not what they do. They build cars, they, they don't build websites. And then if we go back again to 2011, they will still use in Drupal 7. So Drupal 7 had a pretty long life uh, span that went all the way, I believe, from 2009 to even today, uh, support, uh, security support is still extended to November 28th this year. And basically what they did, it's they, they did a Drupal 7 to 8 migration and they, they did a Drupal 8 to 9 migration like seven months ago. Uh, okay, and yeah, this is like a, like a 2005 version of their website uh, back then when they kind of started. Just brought it for fun. Uh, so yeah, so basically what, what will a successful migration mean? It means that you go from one stage of the website to the next one while you respect at least some of the following uh, scenarios. So the first one, you have a similar website behavior. You, you don't want to just do a switch and people yesterday on November 15th they were doing something and suddenly now it's not the same or it's not gonna work or you have to do like a complete relearn the system. That's one thing. Second, uh, you expect at least to have the exact same user data. So I'm talking about logs, I'm talking about the username and on the logging uh, credentials. Uh, also, a successful migration is expected to have a replicated content architecture. So unless it was planned, you're expecting to, on the new side, to have the same or something similar to what you experienced before. And also you want to have the same. This is something you would like to really have exactly the same. The same URL and the same metadata. You don't want to lose all that traffic 
that you have from Google or all those references that you have from different resources that we're linking towards your uh, website. And for the last, I'm leaving the third party integrations. This is something, I'll say it's a little bit more arbitrary, but things like Google Analytics, uh, some tracking system, you would like to have at least a, a continuous uh, path from one version to the other one so you don't lose uh, track or you have to start starting everything uh, from scratch. So now I'm gonna go to like four categories we define regarding a Drupal migration. This is gonna be kind of fun. So the first one is what we call the easy migration. The second one is the CMS one. Uh, then we have the custom website migration and then we have the ghost uh, migration. Let's go to the first one. Um, I'm doing now a, back, a time backwards uh, uh, travel, kind of what I did with uh, Tesla.com before. So the easy one, this is a Drupal 8 to Drupal 9 one. Uh, there's an amazing module called Upgrade Status. You install it in any Drupal 8 site and it will give you an amazing uh, status page. I'll break it down now on, on, on this uh, example by sections. <coughs> So, one of the first things you see, it's um, like a summary of what's going on. So, how ready is your Drupal site to jump into Drupal 9? You can see like this is like a pretty uh, simple description of what's com coming after. Uh, so, I'll just go to the first one. First, you're going to see regarding the hosting environment. This tool will tell you know what kind of set up you have in your server that might not be compatible to go into Drupal 9. So now you know, you know exactly what you need to do to prepare at least the hosting to do that. Second, uh, you're gonna have a list of modules that are incompatible with Drupal 9. It's, it's a pretty uh, good list because you can see uh, if there is an actual alternative on Drupal.org, for example, in this case, uh, admin toolbar, the 2.x line, is not compatible, but if you switch to the 3.x1, it should be. So the module gives you a report. Okay, this one's not gonna work, but there's an alternative in the contrib section of Drupal that you can use. Now on the Git deploy case, there is an available uh, one option. So it, it goes all the way down, scanning all the modules. Uh, there's also a section where it tells you what you need to update. So these are modules that are uh, incompatible right now, but if you run an update, they will become compatible. Then uh, we have the scan section, which is, which is pretty useful. You can select your custom main modules and you can run the scan and it will let you know the list of functions that are not compatible with Drupal 9. So it's, it's amazing, it's pretty automated, it, it's, it's great. And it will also give you which modules have not yet reached the status that can be uh, considered compatible, or at least not by the module maintainers, and it will kind of encourage you to collaborate to get it done. And then obviously it will tell you what's actually compatible, and if you need to grade it or not, and then you take a decision based on that. So this, this module, it's amazing. As I said, it's Drupal 8 to Drupal 9, and the other great thing, it's, it's gonna be the same with Drupal 10. So going from 8 to 9, with this module is great, it's gonna be the same experience going further uh, from here on. And, <coughs> sorry. Uh, so this is a list of features that it comes uh, included with it. So basically it's, it's like a complement to the actual uh, Drupal core checking that's gonna be uh, way better to, to follow through. Now, there's another graph I wanna show you. This is also from today and it's also a report from WT Text. So as you can see here, Drupal 7 is the green line on the top. So there's still a lot of Drupal 7 sites out there. But what's potentially gonna happen? Take a look at this. So on November of the last year, November 30 last year, uh, after a long announcement, Drupal 8 security coverage was dropped. So this is why Tesla they moved on November 16, and this is why many of the Drupal 8 sites that existed before uh, this day, before November, start switching over to Drupal 9 during that period. You can see now the number since April has been uh, inverted, so we have now more Drupal 9 websites out there 
than Drupal 8. Uh, looking forward, this is a trend that is expected to continue to be held like this. It's also expected to be happening with Drupal 10, which is great. I mean, it's easy to go from one version to the other one. And obviously, we can see here that it's harder to do the jump from this version to the next one. So when I went uh, before and talked about the Tesla example, uh, there's one thing I want to mention here. So this icon I put here is considered a migration. So actually, the Drupal 8 to 9 uh, jump in the Tesla.com website or any other Drupal 8 site is not a migration by itself. It's an upgrade because we're taking a website right as it is and we're running out an upgrade on it to go from one version to the other one. So this is why it's the easiest migration to do. Okay? So now I'm going to go to the CMS migration. So um, when I mean CMS, I'm even talking about Drupal 7, Drupal 6, WordPress, Joomla, whatever other platform you have. So from a migration point of view, uh, going from Drupal 7 uh, to the 8 needs to be migrated literally from one website to the other one. It's not something we can just override the code. It's something we need to literally migrate. So uh, how does it work? I'm going to give you an example. We migrated back in 2018 our company website from Drupal 7 to Drupal 8. And uh, yeah, we had to do an actual migration. Why? Because there were many things we wanted to have in the new website that were not there before. Sorry, they, they were there before. Uh, so we wanted to continue uh, having our SEO, having our blog posts, our taxonomy, our user content, the relationship between our content. Sorry, so we have to build an actual migration to get it all done. And then on the day we decided, okay, from now on we're gonna be showing the new website. We simply use our DNS and say, okay, this is not gonna be pointing anymore to this hosting server. From today on, it's gonna to point to this one, and all URLs were right there, all content was right there, and for a user navigation perspective, no one noticed, but we were already running into a new Drupal version. So, uh, a few modules I wanna mention. So, since Drupal 8, there are a few modules that are really uh, amazing for doing this. Uh, the Migrate, which comes with the core. Uh, there's one called Migrate Drupal, um, there's another one called WordPress Migrate. So all these modules allows you to connect to, uh, let's call it a CMS database, and pull the information from there, move it into a new Drupal database, and start from, from uh, that point. So then we have the custom website migration. This is something like the one I mentioned before with the, with the Windsor uh, Detroit Bridge Authority. Uh, they, they had a custom-made website, and we took care of moving it over into uh, Drupal 9. So basically, uh, we use Migrate, which is the, the core module, to move, move most of the content, move the URLs, move everything. And one of the coolest things this module has is that you can create a database connection between your Drupal website and the source database of your customer uh, website. Basically, you have your own, and then you connect to that source database, and then you can pull out all the information you want, place it inside of Drupal the way you want, and then you can just run all the migration from there. And then we have the ghost one. So the ghost one, it's, it's kind of a migration. Uh, so I'm going to give you a, a real-life example, too. So this is a website from Quebec, uh, where we come from, which is an automotive marketplace that it's uh, pretty popular in, in the region of Quebec. Now what happens is this company wanted to integrate most of its inventory with a brand new uh, Drupal marketplace that was also showcasing a lot of uh, inventory. Now the thing is they didn't have the budget yet to do an entire Drupal migration, to do a rebranding and to move on. So basically they have an inventory, they have cars like this listing from 2022, so it's, it's a pretty active website but they, they don't have the resources yet to do an entire redesign. But they want to move on, they, want, they still want to do business. So this is an additional and separate marketplace they want to integrate with, and basically, uh, even though their listings were not as modern or nice looking as this one, they wanted to do the integration. Well, we basically did a content uh, ghost migration, so basically both websites are connected, so anything that comes up into the old one automatically gets uh, submitted into the new one. 
And now people can browse the inventory of both websites uh, at the same time on the main one, while the old one is still keeping its old user base, all the content, and all the traffic that it currently has. So this is what we call ghost migration. It can be achieved also with migrate module, or it can also be achieved using the feeds module, which is also uh, a good alternative to integrating uh, database and content from both. Now I want to talk about a bonus uh, migration part. So I've talked so far much about CMS websites, uh, but there's much more you can do uh, when you want to migrate content in Drupal. So one thing, it's you can use the Migrate Plus module, so you can source your data from JSON files, XML, uh, you can also get CVS files, and you can even, with the Migrate Google Sheets, you can even grab data from a, a spreadsheet from Google Sheets, which is, it's amazing. Uh, so additionally, you can also grab it from Excel files, LibreOffice, and there are some additional modules you can migrate data kind of from many other places. So how does it come when you have to do an estimation of a migration? So our experience is uh, obviously, uh, from our point of view, it's basically in what we do with our customers. So this is kind of our main flow of how we treat most of our customers that we bring from a point A to a point B where they want to improve their entire uh, online journey with customers. So basically, first we do research and discovery uh, phase. Uh, mainly it takes a website audit, we gather some requirements, uh, we do some content migration uh, planning based on what we find in those audits. And then we go to the UX and UI design, we propose them, okay, this is what we can uh, do. Uh, they give us a feedback, so we actually go with them all the way, then we go into a development and testing session, uh, sorry, phase. And finally, we train them to, so they can be independent and work with their system no matter what happens next. So if we were to go into specific migration, uh, basically we will take out a few uh, parts of it, because if you're just moving from one platform to the other one, we don't need to redesign or rebrand your website. We just want to port you to a platform where you can say, okay, from now on, I'm gonna be maintained by the community or support on top of the work of the community, and then you can contribute back to Drupal you can uh, take care of your content or take care of your business, which is uh, where your main objective is. And this is kind of how we change the, the process from there. So if we were to go into like a ballpark estimate regarding how much effort it might take to do a Drupal migration, okay, these are some kind of basic ideas you can get. Let's say you have a blog that it's pretty simple. You have a title, uh, sorry, an article that has a title, has some uh, tags, and then you have the article content. Well, it's not gonna be hard to make a migration of a website for that if you're not uh, design sensitive. If you don't, you don't mind, you just wanna move and port it to a more safe environment, to a Drupal website, it's something you can maybe do in less than 30 hours after having some knowledge of how to do migration. Now, if you wanna do something related to that but more with the theming work, it's the same thing, but the only difference that you're gonna to have to do theming development on top of the new uh, blog site. Uh, and regarding corporate websites, so it obviously takes uh, more time. The, the, the answer is always depends. So if someone tells you, okay, that's gonna take me 100 hours, just run away. That's a scary uh, kind of feedback someone can give you. But based on what we've seen, uh, depending on how much you wanna go, or how much you want to uh, add on top of the design, uh, then it should take about 150 to 450 hours to do something very slight. You see, there's a lot of migration to do, which is not a heavy load, but then most of the time it's gonna be spent building the front end, building the theming, building uh, the front face of the website, website by itself. And yeah, I won't go further regarding estimation uh, because I, it, it can go really long depending on how many, uh, how, how much websites we're talking about. So basically we can help you get an estimate. I mean, if you have a website, you want to uh, have just an idea how much effort it will take us to, uh, to do it. I mean, we can do it now if you want. Uh, if you want to do it later, you can just uh, send us an email. You just can track the, the QR code. You can send us an email and say, hey, Jorge, what do you think about this website? How, how will you migrate? And I can tell you, okay, 
I can see uh, this uh, amount of content, use these libraries in the content. This might take this amount of volume of work. Uh, there's nothing for, uh, for this uh, in the Drupal community, so it might need to be done. So there are many factors that might influence uh, a bulk part estimate, but either way, it's a good idea for you to at least have uh, a basic knowledge of how much effort it's going to take you to go uh, from uh, status where you might be exposed to hacks or uh, security issues or any kind of problems regarding your data, your website, and your company, and moving into a more solid uh, solution like Drupal. So overall, this is my uh, presentation. I hope it was useful. I'm going to jump into into the question uh, section. Just want to add that we're doing training uh, over the next uh, few months. There are the the dates. Uh, as I said, we love helping people learn about Drupal. Uh, maybe uh, you want to do some migrations in your organization. Uh, we can help you with that. Maybe you just want to have some feedback. We can also help you with that. And uh, that's it. It's uh, that's all I have for today. So questions. I'm all yours. Is anyone there? Okay, right. If you, if you asked for an estimate there. Sorry? Um, I, I'm going to send you an email on that. Okay. If this is a personal site with an organization that belongs to it's not a Drupal site now, it's a probably written PHP site. <coughs> and I've been struggling to migrate it to Drupal 9. So. Good yeah. I'm going to send you an email. Yeah, sounds good. I'd love to give you an input and tell you what, what will we do or how we, how we, you can just share with your coach with us and you can just let you know what we can. organization has no money, so. <laughs> no worries, yeah. It's yeah. just like that. It's just to share. Um, it's, uh, the current website is non-responsive. It's just a horrible website. <laughs> It has information that people use, but it's a horrible website. Okay, and regarding information and architecture, have you have you already sorted out? I have started doing the migration slowly. Okay. But it's not a automated one. It's just looking what's on the old site and making a new site look sort of like it. Okay. So it's taken me on and off about a year now. But it's on and off. So, um, and I want to get it going. And if you can give me hints on what, what I could use automated tools to get stuff out of the old database into the Drupal. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I'll say like general ones. Like, uh, first, if you want to do a Drupal, uh, so there are two things. Let, let, let's talk about the, the front end side first. So, the front end side estimate of, of the amount of work that you might need to do in the front it's going to be similar no matter what kind of platform you use. Mm -hmm. So it's the same HTML output, then you just play with JavaScript, CSS to organize it, to customize it, to do whatever you need. So the heavy load, it's uh, on that side, obviously. And regarding migration, ideally, once you set up a migration, uh, when, when I mean migration, I'm talking about a uh, connection. Mm -hmm. once, you, once you set, uh, set a plug between a data source for specific content, not for all of them, mm -hmm. but with a data source and then with a data destination, once you set that plug, unless something changes on the source database, that should be it. Mm -hmm. So you should be able to run a certain migration today or one in two months, and the website is going to be entirely populated with whatever is on the other website. There's new content, it's going to be there. There's all content uh, removed, it's going to be done from here. Mm -hmm. So that's one thing. So if you're struggling regarding uh, inconsistency on, on the data on both sides, uh, I, I will encourage you to address that first. So you can say, okay, this is like a, let's say, uh, a naked front-end website, but I have all the data I need. So I will, I will suggest you to go first to pull out all the information and put it into the website or at least set up all the connectors so you can have that step ready. So because once you're done with that, then your problem is a different one. You don't have a migration problem. You have a front-end development problem. I think I did it wrong. I did the front-end first. 
That might be it. Yeah. Yeah. Have you got an issue always set up the connections first? At least how how we how we done it. Uh, we, we split our, our uh, back end developers from the front end ones. So the front ends don't put their hands on the work until the migration plugs are all connected. You know, I've looked at all the migration stuff in Drupal and I keep on getting lost on the data migration stuff. So um, it, it's you know, that's not my forte work. <laughs> yeah. Well, I I'll say that's like like the general uh, path that I will follow. Now, when to do it, there are a few modules. I didn't mention those in the presentation. There are a few modules where you can set up when these migrations are going to happen, either by Chrome or schedule. Uh, but ideally, uh, the when shouldn't be a problem for the front end. Uh, because once everything is uh, going through, uh, it should be more straightforward. Well, I don't have a problem. You know, I, I own both sites, so I have access to both sites and databases on both sites. So that's not <coughs> take a copy of the database else that you have to, to play with it that way. Yeah, and the, does the source database structure change as much or drop no. it? No. All right. it's, yeah. been, it's been solid for years. Yeah, if, if you're going to address that first, uh, let's say that you feel comfortable enough that if that database breaks or gets hacked or whatever, but all the data you have it on the new site, if, if you reach that uh, status point, mm -hmm. uh, then and just say, okay, all the data is already fallen through. Now I can uh, start working on the front end side. You, you can even for a front end developer, it doesn't need to be a Drupal expert, but you can just say, hey, work on this uh, front end and in this styling, this theme, uh, but the output of the information is already there. Uh, you can just start from there. But, but the first stage, for sure, it's passing over all I'll send you an email and you can take a look. Yeah, no, for sure, I'll, I'll love to give you uh, okay. more detail. Thanks. You're welcome. Any other question? Have you had any luck um, with uh, WordPress? Like, I would like to change hosting company, but I have a WordPress um, that I just I would just like to download. I mean, migrate it to another hosting company. Uh, but since WordPress is under under the tutelage of Drupal, right? I would assume that there'd be a migration. Uh, you, you mean to migrate from WordPress to Drupal? Well, I could, you know. Okay. Uh, well, I'll say that, so I'm, I'm not like putting there in Drupal here now or mm -hmm. either in WordPress, uh, but if you need to switch from one CMS to the other one, you need to have a really solid reason to do so. Okay. Because both communities are really strong. I'll say, obviously, Drupal is more flexible. It can handle way more traffic in terms of performance. Yeah. Uh, but the WordPress always wins, or at least so far it's always winning on the user interface and the user experience uh, side for the content author. So uh, now regarding hosting, if, if, you don't, if you're like, okay, let's say you want to go ahead with uh, <coughs> WordPress. Regarding hosting, uh, so far the best I've seen is uh, Pantheon, which the only problem they have is it's slightly expensive uh, depending on the traffic you get. So Pantheon works works great if you have a website that it's one of the main purposes of it, of it is generating revenue uh, because it's, ex it's expensive based on the volume of traffic. And let's say if you have a, a website that gets 100,000 visitors per month, but it's mainly informational, you don't have any ad or you don't have uh, like right. ways to monetize it, yeah. uh, they can charge you like pretty six to seven hundred dollars a month. Uh, it can be <coughs> like for a personal blog, it can be a problem. Uh, you would be paying like nine to ten thousand dollars a year just to have the hosting. Now, in terms of backup uh, safety and all that, it's amazing. It's it definitely worth it. Uh, but yeah, they 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 miss that uh, gap of they, they're more tar they're targeting agencies more than individuals. Mm -hmm. So alternatives, if 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 it's the case of an individual website, uh, I don't know. Maybe WP Engine. Which one? WP Engine. WP Engine? Mm -hmm. Okay. I guess what kind of website is it? Is it enterprise or more? This is my, it's a personal website that the, the hosting company is not very good, so I need personal. to get it off of there. Yeah, it Person, surpass hosting for personal experience. Yeah. It, 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 your but you would think it would just be really yeah. easy out of WordPress, right? Yeah. If you're used to 
doing this admin type stuff and installing your own Drupal site. I'm sorry, I can't hear what you're saying. If you're if you're used to doing sysadmin type stuff mm -hmm. and installing your own Drupal site, etc., I use Linode for <coughs> my personal stuff. Mm, yeah. But you have to go from scratch yeah. to installing it. It's a it's web, uh, <laughs> web programming is the ladder on their own personal site. If it's personal, you know? <laughs> yeah, like something yeah. like Bluehost or, or like I said, Surpass hosting I've used yeah. for like 20 years. WP Engine, Pantheon would be more enterprise level because I'm, I'm okay at that now. I'm um, mm -hmm. coming from a 1300 person, $150 million company. So we're looking at yeah. uh, Aqua and Pantheon, actually for Drupal, um, but we were looking at WordPress as well. But for personal, you could probably get away with something yeah. a little bit lower yeah. cost. It's like the plumber with the glass helmet. Yeah, I, I, and that, that, that would be like a good business niche. I mean, even for those platforms that are to, to come up with a more individual kind of a solution, uh, they are obviously targeting the big ones, but that's, at some point someone's gonna come up with something similar to that, that's going to be a good solution. But so far, yeah, you're right. It's, a, it's, it's hard to figure out what to use. But yeah. Sorry, we only have a minute left. <laughs> so. Sure. Okay. Uh, yeah, any, any other question? No. Well, good thing. Thanks a lot for your time. I appreciate it.